Hello everyone, back from video hibernation to talk a little bit about a recent acquisition of mine. Um, I'm going to talk about the Mississippi Records reissue of the Anthology of American Folk Music. This just came out here at the end of March. And uh, the reissue is on 200 gram vinyl. There are four volumes, the original three plus the unreleased fourth volume um, from the original Anthology of American Folk Music. And uh, they retail for, you can get this set on their website for $140. Um, I don't believe that includes shipping. Uh, from what I can see on eBay, they're, eBay and Amazon, they're about $49. Um, I got these locally for about $38 each. So uh, it's probably what the um, same cost as what the Mississippi Records would be uh, shipped directly. Um, they also come in a wooden slipcase for the, if you get them directly from Mississippi Records. So... Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the aesthetic of the reissue here, sort of compare it to some of the previous um, releases of the Anthology of American Folk Music. So just to talk a little bit about the um, uh, the set and what is kind of contained in it for those that don't know. Uh, the Anthology of American Folk Music was originally released in 1952 by Folkways Records. Uh, it was compiled by Harry Smith and uh, was really the first compilation collection of uh, 78s on LP. And it was really responsible for the, uh, the folk boom of the mid fifties and uh, also the, you know, the sixties. Um, a lot of the artists that were featured on the albums uh, and on the collection were uh, really had a um, kind of a, a, a rebirth of their career uh, during those timeframes because of the anthology of American folk music. Uh, Mississippi Fred McDowell is a great is a great example of that. Um, so really, what we have here is um, it's an exact replica of the 1952 release. Uh, it's basically a red cloth um, kind of jacket, and with the sticker, each you know each um, volume has a different sort of color, and they you know represent either Earth. Um, uh, water or fire. Uh, the fifth or the fourth volume uh, was supposed to represent air and just to be all the different elements, but it's yellow. So obviously Harry Smith was, you know, living in New York at the time. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But um, the packaging is is really exquisite, uh, and I'm I'm not too much of a fan of this, and I'll kind of explain why. Um, I'll kind of bring that in close so you can see how thick the jacket is it's really almost like double the size of a normal lp um i have here's a regular folkways lp it's a little kind of split there but um you can really see that the size of it is quite is quite different it's almost about double the size of an lp and there's also these small spacers let me just set this up here there's sort of these small spacers at the bottom which kind of uh, as, as you can see with mine, they've they've split on some from basically, you know, pulling the record out. So I don't really, I don't know if I really like the way that the packaging was was done in that aspect because it's a little hard to get the the records in and out. Um, I took it out already just to kind of you know just for time's sake, but um, you really sort of have to pry it apart to pull out the jacket. So. Um, not really too sure how I feel about that. Um, the actual record, uh, as I said, it was pressed on 200 gram vinyl. Uh, here's just to, to compare, here's an, an original Folkways. This record is from 1959. So just to kind of give you an idea of what the label looks like. And then also comparing it to the Mississippi Records release. So as you can see, they, you know, they have the style of Folkways record. I mean, the big difference is obviously this whole label is all printed, whereas the Folkways one is the flat label with the silver paint on it. And in each volume, uh, we open them up to the inside. You'll see uh, there's a booklet, and then there's sort of this. I really don't know. I'm not really a fan of the way that this is set up because it's kind of a clunky way to kind of hold the book it, the booklet. Like, I mean, I guess it works, I mean, with how they have it set up. Um, but it's almost, I think it's sort of trying to replicate like a 78 album. Um, I, and I did try 
That's kind of the first thing to do, just to see if these records do fit in there. And, and they would fit if it wasn't in a jacket. Um, but I don't really just want to have the loose records just sitting in there. So um, I really think it would be, I don't know, perhaps maybe not make it as thick on the outside and make the inside like a regular 78 sort of album. I don't know, my thoughts. But I, that would be something that I would, uh, would probably change about it. Uh, the booklets. Now, the booklets, you do get a booklet in each volume. So here's volume one. Uh, it's volume two. Booklet, same way. I'll show you the other one. Volume two. You see it comes in there. And then the fourth volume, which was not released uh, due to Harry Smith sort of having some arguments as far as over the content. So they say, I mean, this is uh, from what was written. I do have a book about uh, folkways that uh, sort of they couldn't decide on some of the tracks. So this has kind of remained previously unreleased. Now, uh, there was a record label in, I think it was around 2000 or 2001, that did release this. So this is kind of the first time you get it as what it would have looked like, you know, had it been released. Um, during the time frame. So a lot of sort of jug band music. There's the Carter family, Robert Johnson, uh, who Robert Johnson, I do not believe was in the, uh, the original first three volumes, but um, just to show you the fourth volume, no liner notes. So <clears throat> just my quick thought on the liner notes in the booklet. So I don't know if it's necessary that this needed to be included in every single volume. Um, just because I think most people that are going to purchase it are probably buy, you know, all four volumes. I, I may be wrong about that, but uh, that's just my thought. So I don't know if printing this for each individual record, but then again, leaving it off of the, you know, the fourth one, if that really makes sense. Um, you know, perhaps something to kind of save on the production. I don't know. My, just, just my thoughts. So um, I'm going to compare this booklet. I have. Uh, this is the set. The first time it was released on CD. This is the uh, 1997 release of the Anthology of American Folk Music. Uh, sort of did the three CDs. There's a booklet of essays, and it also came with a reproduction booklet. So I don't have an original one to kind of compare, but we'll we'll take a look at these real quick. Um, so the one that is in my that is in on your left is the. This is the reissue one from 97, and this is the one from the Mississippi Records. So as you can see, they're pretty much identical. The Mississippi Records, a little more saturated, a little darker. Um, if I flip through the 97 issue, um, you can kind of see that the pages are sort of on this yellow paper. I just kind of to give it an older feel, I guess. Um, and, and the liner notes are just phenomenal. I mean. Harry Smith put a lot of effort into this. This is really part of the set where he talks about, oh, hey, here are all the different, um, you know, here are all the different artists, sort of, these are the different songs that have mandolin in them, things like that. Now, if we compare it to the Mississippi Records one, uh, one thing that I notice is that a lot of this stuff is cut to the edge. So there's no, um, it's, you know, no bleed, basically. You know, I know this stuff from the zine <laughs> and, and printing stuff. So as you can see, the, there's a little bit of an edge left on these ones. Um, so it makes it seem, I don't know, a little different, I guess, the way that it's set up. Uh, you know, the, there's this line that goes to the top of the page where it doesn't really go to the top of the page in the 97 issue. But one thing I really wanted to to stress and emphasize that on a few of these pages, now the, the first ones are okay, uh, but as you get to about maybe number 35, and I don't know if it's just with maybe these, you know, these four sheets basically, um, all of my books are exactly the same. If you take a look, I'll let that focus. You can't read it. It's really bad quality, and we'll compare it to, here's the CD reissue of the exact same page, completely clear. 
So you can also see the some of the pictures, obviously. This is the 97 Smithsonian issue. And the Mississippi Records one. You can see that the pictures are a little more saturated, a little darker. So it just seems to be on a few of those pages. I think it's just these two. Um, but then the other, the other ones are very, the detail looks very good on them. So, um, you know, a little, just a, a, a minor complaint. So, you know, as you can see, it's cool to have, you know, the liner notes are very important, you know, definitely great to read while you're listening to this music. But, um, I don't know if I mentioned it was a limited release of 2000. So they're sort of still, still readily available, I guess. Um, from their website, they haven't said anything about they sold them out. So, um, thanks for watching. Backs are completely blank. <laughs> so you get the track listing, the artists on one side, and the songs on the other. So that's that. So thanks for watching.